World XTT 212 control panel. The Power World XTT 212 is a compact 200 amp AC DC TIG set with current control torch and it's one of our most popular selling TIG welders. A great feature compared to other TIG sets is it comes with a current control TIG torch straight out of the box. It's really useful and gives you greater control. You can also obtain a foot pedal if you need. Here we go through the front panel functions and setup. The centre knob is the main control, but let's explain the buttons to the side. The top left button is for gas test. Use this with a flow meter to test correct gas flow as at your torch before you weld. The next button is the HF high frequency button. The high frequency is what enables the arc to jump a gap so that you don't have to touch your tungsten onto your job. Unless you're in an environment where you can't use HF, i.e. there is some sensitive electronics about, then I would always have this on. Switching it off is only applicable in DC mode for steel. But switching it off for AC mode, aluminium, means you just can't weld. As for AC, you need HF continuously. Next, we have the pulse button. The pulse is generally used for DC, especially when welding stainless steel. Stainless steel has a chromium in it, and this is what makes it resistant to rust. Unfortunately, when welding, if you get the weld pool too hot, it can burn away this chromium, meaning your weld will be unprotected and will eventually rust. We use the pulse to produce a hot pulse, then a cool pulse. This hot cold action enables us to keep the heat down in the weld seam. The top right button is for the welding trigger. The top LED is trigger on off and the bottom one is for trigger latch. Use this when doing long welds. Press the trigger and release to start the weld and press and release again to stop. Next is AC DC. AC is for aluminium and DC is for ferrous materials. And finally we have the MMA function. In the centre we have the main control knob and this is where you control the synergic settings and adjust your welding current. The graph shows what's going to happen once you press the trigger. So starting from the left we have pre-gas. This is the short amount of time required for the gas to reach the end of the torch. TIG welding is a high grade weld, so therefore we need to ensure we have correct gas flow before we are cut. If you don't, carbon from the atmosphere can enter your pool and contaminate. Under extreme circumstances, this can damage your tungsten. The longer your TIG torch, the more time you will need. A good setting to start with is about 0.3 to 0.5 or half a second. Turn the knob till the LED is on the torch symbol on the left, press and it will flash. Then adjust to your desired setting and press again to save. The next setting will give you slope. You don't want to arc up straight away with say 50 amps as the part may be too delicate. Or we just want a soft start. Selecting the slope and adding half a second will mean the current will start and slowly increase over half a second to our selected welding current. The top setting is the welding current setting. Here you adjust to the desired welding current. The LED will always return here even when adjusting other settings. Always remember to check, check which LED is lit. Press the button until the top LED flashes, then adjust. The one thing I did find frustrating is that if you are not watching, you may think you're adjusting the welding current, but you're adjusting another setting. It's very easy to move off it. If you use a foot pedal, setting this current will give you the maximum current you will achieve with the foot pedal fully depressed. This is slowed down. This is important, especially in aluminium AC mode. You don't want your welding current to just switch off. 
This is bad as the heat will be dragged out from your pool by the surrounding material, possibly creating a crater. To reduce this crater effect, we reduce the current slowly, i.e. slot down, so that the pool solidifies slowly. The thicker the material, then the more slope you need. Start at 2 to 3 seconds for steel, and I usually use 5 to 10 seconds for aluminium. Finally we have the post flow gas. This does two things. It keeps the gas covering the pool till it solidifies and helps to cool the ceramic. I would recommend a minimum of 5 seconds for steel and anything up to 15 seconds for aluminium, depending on the thickness. If you scroll again and you have AC selected, you will get this symbol. This means cleaning effect and it's square waved. This is the percentage the weld is heated to the material cleaned. Aluminium oxidizes. It forms a clear barrier over itself to protect itself from atmosphere. It's like a, a clear paint lacquer that grows over the surface like a mold and it forms immediately after cleaning. It also takes a lot of heat to burn it away. The oxide layer burns at over 2000 degrees Celsius yet the aluminium melts at above 600. Therefore, if you don't get rid of the oxide correctly, it will sit in your weld pool, potentially creating a weld fault like crater cracking. We use this alternating current to heat, then clean the weld, and at 30% heat to 70% clean is a good place to start. If you notice your weld pool is still frosty looking, then increase the cleaning part. Be careful, as too much causes the tungsten to boil excessively. The power weld though has a weird setup here. It starts at 15 and finishes at 50, which is a little confusing to many people. I usually set it to 15 and adjust if necessary, but usually 15 is a good setting for nice clean aluminium welds. This setting is frequency. Basically what this does is alter the width of the arc. Low frequency means the arc is wide, which is great for aluminium, and enables you to create nice fat weld pools. I usually set this at 60 Hz when I'm using aluminium. The more you increase this, the more the arc goes to a point and concentrates its heat into a smaller area. Powerweld XTT212 is a compact AC-DC TIG welder. And we found it's been really popular with people repairing alloy wheels and repairing aluminium fuel tanks etc etc. It's also really good on stainless steel.